Um, so Ram Maraja is going to, is doing things in the United States, but helping people upskill themselves uh, from, you know, traditionally more hands-on work into uh, into more office, better paid jobs in data science. So, Ram. Uh, uh, thank you, United Nations, Mr. Lambert, uh, diplomats and delegates for giving me the opportunity. Uh, my name is Ram Khatamaraja. I'm the founder and CEO of an organization called Collaberry. Uh, we do uh, data analytics and data science work. And Refactored is a platform uh, that we created uh, over the last seven years to basically prepare uh, workers of today for the workplace of tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to like uh, talk with stories. I like telling stories. Uh, the way we started uh, our initiative was seven years ago, I wanted to hire a military veteran as a data analyst in my team. Uh, and I could not find anybody with the right skills. That's when we went on the process of building this uh, platform where <clears throat> we wanted to reskill military veterans to transition into the uh, civilian work. Uh, and as of today, uh, our platform is basically uh, dedicated uh, to help individuals, especially whose jobs are getting automated, uh, to transition into jobs in the data industry. So, um, and uh, when we say, when I say data industry, we are like focusing on uh, future of work and what, and what does the future of work means. Uh, based on McKinsey reports, about 800 million jobs globally will be will disappear because of automation and artificial intelligence. Right? What that means is a drastic change in the workplace and the skills required, um, and even the roles of the people. Right? So, uh, and that means like if the organizations are not uh, adapting, changing for this future of work, they are going to fail. So as of today, um, artificial intelligence is here and it's impacting, yet about 85% of the organizations are not yet ready to adapt. Uh, what our platform does is it provides solutions uh, for organizations to create a culture of AI at scale. Uh, and we do this by providing upskilling and reskilling of skills that are relevant for today and also tomorrow so that the organizations can not only survive uh, and adapt the future of work, but also thrive. That's our hope. And I'm going to talk about a few examples of the work uh, that we are doing. So uh, meet Ofa. Uh, she is a cashier uh, in Bay Area. Uh, she was part of a um, project by Facebook. Facebook was trying to build the opportunity gap uh, and partnered with an organization called Year Up, uh, which works with inner city youth. Uh, so our platform provided Ofa and her colleagues a uh, skill gap assessment, and we identified a personalized learning path. Uh, so that she can gain uh, data thinking and transition into an internship job as a data analyst at Facebook. That was the, actually the easy part. The, in, the difficult part that we found out is uh, when we started talking to these uh, young adults, they don't have access to powerful computing. right? So if you want to work in the future of work, unless you have a powerful computer, you are like lost, right? So we had to innovate, and we created uh, what we call Skill Cloud. And what the Skill Cloud allows you is, uh, OFA can access the Skill Cloud from her class, from a lab, from library, from her home, and access all software and highly uh, powerful computing at very low cost, right? And this allowed her to really dedicate time. She has motivation, but she didn't have access to computing, right? So it allowed her to really dedicate time, learn by doing, and uh, not only become a data analyst intern at Facebook, now she's uh, working as data engineer at Facebook. Like that, we have, in the last four years, more than 120 
young adults have been uh, transitioned to work in Silicon Valley companies, uh, and we are doing more work uh, in the future. Uh, meet Mika. Uh, she's a bank teller working for minimum wage, uh, and she was uh, living shelter to shelter, meaning she has very limited time on her hand to learn anything new. So our platform, it provides uh, on-demand interactive learning so that she can learn at whatever time that he has, probably from her car or uh, she, if she has access to the internet, at library or anywhere. And not only that, our platform creates a uh, learn by doing uh, platform. And what that means is uh, Mika can work on complex topics real time, learn them, and apply them immediately. So uh, what you're seeing is like a Python code which spits out a complex diagram. So this, to, uh, doing this actually takes significant amount of uh, upfront work, but it's, on, it's all online. They just go, like, start doing it and learn. So within six months, she became a data developer in a finance company. Not only that, now she gives back as a mentor uh, and a, an inspiration to many others who are coming through the platform. Uh, meet uh, Mr. Kajovi. He has an interesting story. He's from Africa, Togo. Uh, he's a uh, military veteran in uh, United States. He has a, a master's degree in mathematics, uh, but uh, he has a, a severe stutter, right? Nobody would hire him because he cannot speak. Um, so he was working as a cable box technician because he doesn't have to talk to anybody. So he came to us and we created uh, a video assignments for him. So what, uh, what it does is every day as he is going through the uh, reskilling and upskilling, he's doing video assignments, and we apply AI here, artificial intelligence, uh, to analyze his body postures, his language, and give feedback. Uh, and not only that, we have a community of mentors who give feedback uh, online. So this allowed him to uh, develop the confidence required to speak fluently, just uh, like Aishwarya was saying, its ability to speak is the fundamental thing. So he developed that confidence, and then he transitioned into a quant at a hedge fund company. And like literally a couple of months ago, uh, he became a technology manager, right? So he's uh, and he's also an inspiration. He's giving back as a mentor, and even his wife went through the program. They both, as a family, are giving back in our ecosystem as mentors. Uh, until now, I talked about like individuals. Here, I'm going to talk about uh, large organizations. Right? Uh, we have this a Fortune 500 company in Midwest, middle of America, trying to innovate. Right? Trying to build next generation teams, uh, and they're and they want like cutting edge data scientists to work there. The problem uh, that they have is the skills that they are looking for. There are probably about 200 data scientists with that skills, and guess what? They are all taken over by Silicon Valley or Innovation Corridor in the East, right? They have like nobody left. So uh, we worked with them, and uh, we uh, we created an onboarding upskilling, meaning hire fresh college grads with. PhDs, advanced degrees, because that's what they wanted to do, but do the upskilling of job-ready skills, like capability to work with cloud, capability to work with data pipelines, and things like that. So with this approach, uh, uh, this organization was able to build a team of 25 people within six months from five, and more than a team of like 50 people uh, within a year, and like literally in the middle of America, which wouldn't happen, right, normally. They are, not only building amazing teams, but also giving opportunity to the fresh college grads. This brings a big question that a lot of youth are spending time and effort to educate themselves, but they are not employable because there is no on the skill gap, the job-ready skill gap bridging that's being put together by organizations. I, this is a very important problem that organizations need to solve. Uh, even for educated people to be eligible to work uh, in the jobs. So just some stats, about 90%, 97% of our graduates who complete our programs, uh, they end up in data careers. Um, if anywhere from 50 to 80K salaries if they are in the data analyst type of positions, anywhere from 70 to 110K if they are in the 
data engineering or data science positions, about 45% women and 70% minorities, right? So this is a, uh, and we are proud of that numbers. Like we, we call it like 100% diversity. Uh, <coughs> so uh, you may be wondering, right? Okay, why, it's why data? Um, I'm talking about data, right? Um, the, the reason why we do data skills is uh, for two fundamental reasons. One is uh, 20 years, 20 plus years ago, uh, if you need, had computer literacy, you had a job. That is the pathway, right? Now going forward with artificial intelligence, data is the fundamental skill that is required. Uh, so if an organization or an individual need to succeed, it, uh, or, or even if artificial intelligence need to succeed, it needs data, high quality data. That means everybody uh, in an organization and in our society need data skills. So it's like the uh, Excel of the future, or it's like the computer of the future. That's why we focus on data. And the other very interesting point is, uh, when we experimented with teaching coding and teaching data, right? Learning coding is a very abstract thing. It is art, and you need to focus, and you need to have you need to have brain share, uh, and you need to be able to put time and effort into that. Whereas working with data is like working with Lego blocks, right? You can see the data, you can play around with it, you can create graphs, and you can have fun with it, right? It allows people to exp uh, to lose fear of technology, right? It, they can quickly learn it, and then. Uh, as they develop uh, the capability to work with data, and then you introduce some sort of coding at the end, it just starts clicking them, cl clicking for them, because they are already primed for these advanced skills. So that's these are the two reasons. One is there are millions of jobs that are required uh, that requires data, and uh, it's easy to learn uh, for people. Next, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, soft skills. And, and then how do you do soft skills at scales? Soft skills like logical reasoning, great problem solving, right? We use a uh, few tools. One tool that we use is uh, gamification. So basically people uh, learn progressively difficult uh, things so that they are constantly uh, feeling, uh, they constantly have a feel of success. Right? So that's one of the tools that we use. And other tool that we use, the data itself. We collect uh, every activity that these people are doing, and, and we provide them in visual format. They can see the dashboards of their performance. Not only that, they can benchmark and compare them with the people who are already successful, who went through this pattern. So think about it, right? So they have a track. They, their data tells them whether they are doing in real time, uh, whether they are doing right today or not, compared to somebody who is already successful. And it gives them the confidence, motivation that is required for them to succeed. And, and it allows, and it just keeps them going. The next thing that we do is communication skill development. I don't know if it works. Can somebody help to play the video? Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to show like a sm uh, small video to show you, uh, please. Hey, how you doing? My name is Dave Outlaw, and I am happy and excited to be here today. Uh, how you doing? My name is Nate Outlaw uh, today. Hello. My name is Nate Outlaw. I am the senior. Hello. My name is Nate Outlaw, I'm the senior member here. Hello, my name is Nate Outlaw, and how you doing? My name is Nate Outlaw, and I would like to talk about Union Hall and Birch. So, right. So, uh, this is a very simple uh, experiment that we did, application of video uh, technology as a mechanism uh, to develop communication skill, right? Uh, so here, we actually don't teach them anything, right? We don't teach them how to speak or anything. Uh, what we bet on is that humans are intelligent enough to understand what good speech is, right? And they can see uh, themselves, uh, whether they're improving or not. Uh, and of course, we also apply uh, artificial intelligence tools to analyze their body postures, their uh, their 
vocabulary, etc., and give them feedback. And we also have mentors and peers giving them feedback. So as you can see, the person who is like unsure in the beginning, like in a six weeks time frame, he is so smooth. Probably everyone of you would want to give him a chance, right? So now. Uh, from a data warehouse uh, associate, now he's a data warehouse architect, right? Uh, leading a team of 10 people uh, in a global uh, organization, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's possible, right? It's possible, uh, and you could use technology to radically shift uh, how people look at themselves, how they learn, uh, and how, how they present themselves, right? So, these are some of the faces of our platform, people from 42 different countries, uh, regardless of their age, religion, sex, nationality, or whatever. They went through our platforms and uh, transitioning themselves. So I have a, I have a ask uh, for all you people, uh, everybody here. Uh, we have been uh, doing a lot of direct one-on-one -on -one B2C model work. We would love to, we won a global competition with MIT Sol, uh, and we are, seems to be extremely relevant in the future of work. Uh, we would like to have the opportunity to do pilots at large scale and prove that uh, this works in uh, transformation and helping societies ready for the future of work. Thank you very much. And that's my email. Uh -huh. so, so we have time for one question here. Any questions for Ram? So, so, Ram, this is in the U.S. Could you do this in other countries? Oh, yes. We are right now experimenting in India with a uh, small independent organization and uh, also uh, trying to work with a large university. Uh, after MIT Sol, we received some interest from large government organizations, so we're still exploring. But, yeah, we strongly believe that it can work anywhere in the world. So for, to, just to give you, like, we have a lot of people uh, coming from Africa who take program from Africa and come here uh, before they get into a job. So we have like a lot of people like that, so it would work. 